Hey guys, so we're at this Peacock restaurant here. And it's hard to come up with words about this place because you walk in and it looks like any other storefront or restaurant front. And as you walk back, the more you walk back, the bigger it seems to get. This and place I'm not even, is massive. I mean, uh, it's like the, every everything, just about everything that we found in Ahihik is sort of this tip of the iceberg thing where you think you know a part of it, but that's really just a sliver. And so we're sitting back here at a table in this absolutely gorgeous garden with plants everywhere, roosters running around, peacocks shaking their butt at you because that's what peacocks do. Yeah. <laughs> How do you cockadoodle-doo? There's so much vegetation and fruit trees. I see a lime tree, a mango tree, a banana or a plantain tree, and then um, something that looks like apples behind us and so many flowers this place is absolutely gorgeous and guess what else we have a special guest with us here right now we have Jerry from Jerry Brown travels and his wife Lori and his wife Lori so we're gonna be swapping stories may even swap some stories with these chickens and peacocks that are greeting us at our feet. probably uh-huh I was trying to let one eat chips out of my hand and I was terrified but he didn't he didn't poke any holes in me so that's good <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch. <laughs> Hola. So this restaurant's absolutely gorgeous. You would come in here expecting to be paying a whole bunch of money for this. But the most entrees hover a little above 100 pesos in the which, 100 to 200 range. Yeah, which is probably the equivalent of a fancy-ish type restaurant that you might find in Guadalajara. We're usually paying about, for a lunch, maybe like 60 to 100 pesos, so this is slightly above that, which is well worth it considering the ambiance. We just finished our lunch here, and if I must say, that was like the best freaking plate of chicken I've ever had in a long time. We're sitting here with Jerry from Jerry Brown Travels. And really excited to talk to you guys. Will you introduce your channel? Well, I'm Jerry Brown with Jerry Brown Travels. <laughs> and Laurie here. Thank you for asking us to collaborate with you. This is great. Absolutely. Well, a little bit about our ourselves. What our videos are, are a little bit different than what you guys make. In the sense, our audiences are people that are retired. Laurie and I have traveled. How many countries have we traveled to, Laurie? Oh, it's more than 35 countries. Wow. We look for <clears throat> countries where it's economical to travel. For people that maybe haven't planned well for their retirement. Are Looking to stretch their budget as yeah, much as possible. Yeah, they can stretch their budget, yes. Maybe you live on $800 a month instead of needing $4,000 a month mm -hmm. to live on. And so we've gone to places like Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Mexico. We have a lot of countries to go and then you can see in our video. It's not a travel video so much as more informational. We'll give mm -hmm. people ideas, let's say, on what we spend a month for eating. So this way people, when they go to a country, they have an idea, real numbers, what they can what they can spend on mm -hmm. there. You guys said something that I thought was pretty interesting because we don't mention this very much either. We talked about this before. We're not trust fund kids. We don't have an unlimited budget. So we're working with you know, just, just a little bit every single day, so we're not able to go to go on fancy, elaborate, expensive trips. We're a little bit similar in that way, in that we're sort of always looking to be very budget conscious and show that you can travel and live in a different place like Mexico without breaking the bank or without needing millions of dollars. That's important because today, in a lot of countries, it's very expensive to travel. And so the countries that we look at are much more economical. Thailand, we do have one on, we, we are from Hawaii and uh, we have some on Hawaii, but uh, that's a little expensive. So that, yeah. <laughs> that's for it. We enjoy, you know, being able to help people, being able to share our ideas and give them practical numbers on how to retire with dignity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they don't have to worry about going to McDonald's and eating $1 hamburgers <laughs> as a diet. And by choosing countries, much cheaper to live in, your money is stretched out so much, you can come into restaurants like this beautiful place here, and you can afford to eat. And you know, I have to throw something in here since of what we were talking about before. You can go to like nicer restaurants like this, although you should come here with the mindset that it's probably not going to be your five-star fancy gourmet restaurant with all the standards or all the customs that you're used to. It's great food, great atmosphere, but also kind of 
have that mindset that it might not be exactly what you're used to in your original culture. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know the other thing too in traveling Mexico in this particular case, it may not be for you. We're blessed with a lot of noise here. Oh yes. <laughs> Rockets going up. The Cars orchestra hunting. of Mexico sounds. <laughs> yeah, Mexico is popping. And Because of the culture shock and stuff like that, people uh, sometimes they get discouraged and they expect it to be Shangri-La, they expect it to be a resort, a life all the time, mm -hmm. but it isn't. You know, life isn't that way. Mexico has its challenges, but of course we love it here and we project that across our love for the area. One of the great things about living in Mexico is you meet expats, you know, like we have met here, mm -hmm. and you bond with them. We're actually closer with our friends here than we are with our family. I hate yeah. to say that. Birds of a feather flock together. We're a different breed of cat. People that have the courage to leave their own country and come to a new place to live. It's scary. Change is scary. So you've traveled to so many different countries, so many different cities, and you settled in Ajijic, Jalisco. Why here? Okay, so in our travels, we were looking for an ahihi. It had all the ingredients. Our playmates can speak English. And also, we're at Lake Chapala. It's the largest lake in Mexico. It has the largest English-speaking library, movie theaters. It has good health care. Also, too, it's only 40 minutes away to the International Airport in Guadalajara. From where we live, we can walk to the lake. We can go to the library. We can go to the movie theater, we can go to the bank, we can go to the doctors. I mean, with all in walking distance. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our With the right criteria. shoes. With the right shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have cobblestones. That's a good yeah. <laughs> There's no skateboarding or roller skating around here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the right shoe and the right step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to wash it the right step because why I say that? Because a lot of dog poop here. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> there are some stray dogs. But the dogs are friendly. Mm -hmm. Mellow, mellow dogs, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about getting bit. We're after a richer environment. There's a lot of volunteer work. We volunteer at an orphanage here. So the community bonds together, even more so than in the States, because we're, we're all looking for new family. Most of the people that are in Mexico are world travelers. They have travel at least. And the people that settle here are, are used to that. The ingredients to here just resonated with us. center of El Centro in Ajijic and we have one last question for you. What would you tell someone if they're thinking of moving or retiring to specifically Ajijic because they think it's the place for them? Perhaps they've never traveled anywhere else. That's an excellent question. Ajijic is very popular. A lot of people know about it. But the important thing, we want you to know there's many other places in Mexico that are beautiful, they're great for expats. You've got the coastal communities, let's say like Mazatlan or Puerto Vallarta, and they're great also. You have inland communities like Chapala even, which is only six miles away from here. And then you have like San Miguel de Allende, where you're living in Guadalajara. And these are very important places too. So don't limit your search on just this part of Mexico, because Mexico is a very big country. You may want to go to Meredith on the East Coast. There's many, many places. So just keep doing your research, keep doing your due diligence, and you'll find your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Absolutely. All right, awesome. Be sure to check out Jerry Brown Travels. We're going to link to that below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe yeah! to both of our channels. <laughs> and if you're looking for more from Tangerine Travels, but not necessarily on our channel, Jerry also has a video where we did a cool little interview about what we're doing. Be sure to check that out. And gong that bell <laughs> so you get notified the next time we put out a new video. And we will see you there. I hope you need more enthusiasm. I think everyone heard that. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>